have to say that that was just not my favourite thing to do. This is my very oldest work in progress. It's so old, in fact, that I didn't know when I started it, so I had to use Instagram and scroll back many years on my profile to discover that I started this in September of 2018. And this week I have decided that enough is enough, this project needs to be finished and that is what we are doing in today's video. So I hope you will enjoy joining me on this journey. And this week's video has very kindly been sponsored by Serious Readers and I will tell you all about them and their wonderful Serious Lights range later in the video. So this was my original plan for this project. It was big hexagon flowers surrounded by a path of cream coloured hexagons. And when I checked Instagram, I was planning to make a king size quilt, which I had completely forgotten that that was the original plan for this. In my previous video, I talked about this project and explained that I fell out of love with it because the hexagons were just too big and I didn't enjoy stitching them together. So I need to come up with a plan for finishing this that doesn't really involve stitching too many hexagons together. I actually put this project on two lists in that video and that was an actual mistake. And I only noticed when I watched the video back and it was too late to change it by then. But getting that project out again, I fell back in love with it and it was the fabric that really did it for me. I absolutely adore the fabrics in this project. And so it really got me thinking about how am I going to tackle this project? How am I going to finish it? How am I going to make it into something that I love? One of the constraints of this project is that this is the only fabric that I have left. It looks like quite a large pile, but I need to be really careful that I don't come up with a finishing idea for this that is going to require more than this amount of fabric because I know that I probably can't get any more of this fabric. I don't want to buy any more of it, but I know it's probably out of print and out of stock everywhere by now because it is a really old collection. And luckily I have this lovely pink for the backing fabric, I have that all ready to go and I also have from the same collection, it's called Linen Texture, I have this off white, well cream colour fabric that I was going to use for the paths and I have a lot of that that I can use for background and borders and things so I don't need to buy anything new for this project at all, I'm just going to use exactly what I've got. So I did a bit of a mock-up on my computer and I decided to just keep it nice and simple to make 12 inch square blocks for the hexagons to be appliqued onto and to alternate them with 12 inch blocks of like a checkerboard style. So I thought the best place to start was just to get all of the hexagon flowers out, count how many there were, see what fabrics I had, lay them out and see if I can come up with some sort of layout that looks like a good way to finish this. However, I have run into some problems straight away. I have got more of some fabrics than others in the flowers. There are quite a few blue ones and there is only one of this fabric. So it's going to be a bit uneven. I could make more but I am reluctant to make more flowers so what I'm going to do is unpick the three that are stitched together and see if I can come up with a layout that looks right. Unfortunately what has happened is some of the seams that I didn't want to come apart have naturally come apart, so I'm going to have a bit of surgery to perform on some of these flowers. I have to say that that was just not my favourite thing to do. Pulling everything apart, it just feels really counterintuitive, although I know that it is essential to moving forward with this, with this project. But it's got me to a point where I need a break. <laughs> the sun is shining, so I'm going off for a walk. Okay, so back now, and yeah, I've got a bit of 
surgery to perform on this one because it came apart a little bit so I just need to stitch that back together then some of the papers came out of this one a little bit at the corners so they just need re-gluing and then I need to give this a press because it is all crumpled and I think I'm going to give them all a press even though they do look not too bad but that's what I'm going to do then I'm going to lay them out and see if we can come up with a concrete design So laying them out like this made me realise that it's going to be absolutely fine, I don't need to make any more hexagons and with the blocks that are going in between everything's going to work out and even if there is a bit of a clash of patterns it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be perfect. Finished is what we're going for here. So time to get pressing the fabric, ready to make the checkerboard blocks that are going in between. So I made a couple of test blocks first and this block is so easy, really simple to do, great for beginners, in fact this whole quilt is really good for beginners. So I'm going to show you how I made these blocks. First I cut some strips of fabric that were four and a half inches wide by the width of fabric that I had. Then I cut some four and a half inch wide strips of the fabric that I was using as the contrast to my patterned fabrics. So the next step is to pair up your strips. So you need two patterned fabrics and one solid, and you also need to make groups of two solids and one patterned fabric. Next, you sew your strips together, right sides together in that order. So pattern, solid, pattern, and solid, pattern, solid. Next I cut four and a half inch strips again but the other way across the fabric so that I got one of each of the strips in my cut. And then it's super simple, just sew them back together again with alternate rows and then you've got your block. And by that stage in the day the sun was beginning to set and it just felt like time now to take a break and to revisit this tomorrow. This video has very kindly been sponsored by Serious Readers and I've been working with Serious Readers for a really long time now because I absolutely love their fantastic range of serious lights. I have the high definition model and stitching does not have to stop in the evenings for me because this illuminates my workspace really clearly because it uses something called daylight wavelength technology which means it replicates the daylight spectrum as closely as technically possible which just makes it so easy to stitch at night time. What's fantastic about this light is that you can really customise it to suit your needs. You can adjust the brightness of the beam of light, make it dimmer or make it brighter depending on what you need. You can also adjust the width of the beam as well, so you can really customise it to exactly what you need. The Sirius lights range are such high quality and they also come with a five year warranty which is just absolutely fantastic for peace of mind. If you're interested in finding out more about the Sirius Lights range then there is a link in the description box and if you were to purchase you can use the code SR512 and that will give you £100 off a high definition light and free delivery. So thank you so much to Sirius Readers for sponsoring today's video. So back to the hexagon quilt and now it is time to deal with the hexagon flowers. So after giving them all a press, first things first, remove those papers and they've all been glue basted and often people ask me well how do you get the papers out then well the glue is just a temporary tacking glue although it's been in these flowers for many years at this point and held up well but all you do is just peel back the seam allowance and then just pull the paper out and it really is as simple as that 
Now once you've done that you do need to give them another press and just make sure that those seam allowances are nicely turned under at the back and nice and flat because that is going to make the applique process much easier. Next onto my backing fabric, so I cut 12 and a half inch squares from this fabric because we want the finished blocks to be 12 inches. And all I'm doing is just folding it in half both ways to find the center of the square. And then I will be able to line my hexagon flower up perfectly. I line those central seams up with the horizontal crease that I put into the backing fabric and then I just centered the vertical crease with my hexagons. You could measure this but I always do things by eye. After pinning in place I decided to have a go at hand stitching them down but I very soon realized that this was not going to be the way forward with this project. I've realized that really I need to stitch these hexagon flowers on by machine otherwise it's going to take too long. So I'm using a blanket stitch on my machine and I actually really like the way it looks. I think with the quilting, however I decide to quilt this and I'm still not sure, but I think along with the quilting stitches that the blanket stitch is going to look really nice and it's going to save me a lot of time. There's often quite a lot of debate about whether it's cheating to use a sewing machine if you're doing some EPP and honestly it isn't cheating. If you need to use a sewing machine to save yourself time or because that's easier for you rather than hand stitching then absolutely do that. The most important thing is creating and enjoying what you're creating, not following any set rules, just make the thing that you want to make and so for me time wise I want to get this project done it, it's been sitting around for many years so I'm going for machine applique and I really like how it looks let me show you so this is my machine it's quite an old machine but it's a really good one I had to switch to this machine because my other sewing machine only does a straight stitch and is brilliant for that and brilliant for quilting and this machine is great for these decorative stitches and I'm using a stitch called quilt and it's actually just a blanket stitch. Let me show you in action. There's a closer look and it looks really neat and I'm really pleased with that so I'm going to carry on stitching the rest of them and then I'll show you what it looks like. So then it was time to lay them out so I tried to use my bed to spread them out because as yet I do not have a design wall but it is on my list of things to do but it really does help to have somewhere to spread them out and I was just trying to get an even balance between the different prints and also to alternate the hexagons and the checkerboard blocks. So now it was time to sew them together. So I just sewed them together in rows first and then I pressed all of the seams on the rows in alternate ways. So I pressed all of one row to the right, then the next row to the left and so on. And then I sewed all the rows together.
Okay, so that is it. Well, it's a finished quilt top with no borders and that's about as far as I'm going to be able to get with it for now, but I'm calling it a finish. <laughs> Even though it's not completely finished, but I'm going to carry on with it and I will show you what it's like when it is completely finished and it is a full quilt. I'm just in that dilemma stage. In fact, I've been thinking about it all the way through piecing it. What am I going to do for the quilting? Am I going to machine quilt it myself, hand quilt it, or send it off to be quilted by somebody else? Which is something I've never ever done, but I think I've ruled that one out. And I'm now just trying to decide between machine quilting it myself or hand quilting it. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. But I will, of course, show you what it's like when it's done. I've got enough leftover fabric for a scrappy binding, which I'm super excited about. So, yeah, I can't wait to show you when it's all done. So, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this little journey. There will be more projects getting finished this year. I've set myself that goal to get them ticked off that list and I've enjoyed working on this one so much and I'm really excited about the finished quilt or the prospect of the finished quilt anyway. So it's actually been more enjoyable than I thought it was going to be to revisit these old projects and get them done. So I hope that you are looking back at some of your unfinished things and joining in with me. And if you are, do let me know about it in the comments. But for now, take care and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.